Hello, my friends. This is Dr. Mohammed Nizami once again with you on another lecture on RF and microwave uh, circuits and device design and modeling. Uh, this is the second lecture, uh, the second presentation on radial uh, combiners. As you know, radial combiners uh, and splitters are a unique class of passive devices that are primarily used in, in uh, power amplifiers, um, efficient power amplifiers for radars and face array uh, antennas. They also can be used for any application where um, the uh, signals has to, to be split in way radially, preferably packaged radially, um, such as um, cylindrical um, uh, uh, objects that needs to have circuits inside of it. So because, it, and it has many advantages as I will show right now. Last time I presented the, um, the radial combiner splitters using the uh, surface integrated waveguides, which are planar circuits. Uh, these, um, you can refer back to my um, presentations on those. Uh, today, I'm going to start presenting um, a, a different class of, uh, of, of, of radial combiners and splitters, and that is based on waveguides, okay? Waveguides interfaced with, with coaxial lines, okay? So we are going to um, go through three uh, designs. One uses waveguides, eight-way waveguide uh, signal radial splitter combiner that is fed by a coaxial cable in the middle of the cavity right here, okay? Now, these can be SMAs or in type. Um, so here is another one that is also, um, we use waveguide and then we interface between a waveguide and another uh, and the uh, eight-way splitter combiner. So this can be used in applications where we have a waveguide and that waveguide has to feed the signal and jump it through another media, which is a transmission line, to the eight-way splitter and combiner. This here, a lot of times is used in radar systems where this feed point here has to rotate uh, freely uh, and still connected via the bottom. The third class, uh, I think we said, we showed this one, we showed this one, and we have one more. Uh, no, that's a cylindrical cavity. Okay, where's the other one? Okay, here's this one and this one. Okay, so this one is also uh, uses the uh, center fed coaxial connector. Uh, but also, instead of going eight-way uh, waveguides, it goes into a a um, a uh, coaxial line. And this here, in an amplifier, uh, in a power amplifier situation, you would of course feed here, and then each one of these would go as an input to an amplifier. And the same assembly would be replicated on the other side. Okay, to to act as a combiner for all these individual power amplifiers. So let's uh, carry on. So again, uh, just to remind you, I'm an independent RF and microwave uh, circuit and device designer. I um, currently have uh, some available time to do consulting, so remote consulting. So if you have a, a product or a design or a CCU uh, that needs to be designed or verified or modified or upgraded, I welcome you to contact me. My rate is um, uh, pretty cheap because I operate out of uh, Jordan, Jarash City, and uh, things here are not as expensive as, as in the United States and Europe. So my rate is $25 an hour on a design. We, um, You basically uh, show me what you need to be designed and I design it for you, send you the uh, design, the VC board, the schematics, bill of material. Um, uh, and starting at the beginning, I would work with you on the system level where we would draft the uh, and finalize the specifications, the requirements, and then move on to system. 
uh, verification using computer-aided design tools such as ADS, uh, System VU, um, and then on to um, the design using um, HFSS for uh, things that are, needs to be 3D model and ADS for active um, parts. And then I would take you to the schematic level using Altium or Cadence. And then I would produce also the BC board for you. So we could do a end to end. All you have to do is receive the PCB artwork and uh, send it to the fab house and assemble it or get it assembled. And I will also work with you on during testing. Okay, so. All right, so um, having said this, so like again, like I said, today we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna have at least few, several, radial uh, we, uh, radial uh, power combiners and splitters. And so this is the second series in this presentation um, uh, type, uh, where the first one I covered the uh, surface integrated waveguide um, radial combiner and splitter. In this one here, I'm gonna cover like I just showed you the waveguide uh, based radial combiners. So uh, some of you have contacted me already. Uh, some of you may need the uh, design files for a lot of these designs that I did. Maybe it helps them out with uh, their um, graduate work or with their actual work where they can get it as an example or build on it or modify it, scale it to the frequency of their use. So I'm making an offer, uh, any of these designs that you see in my uh, playlist, email me and you can uh, get a copy of all of the design stages. And I would work with you at least a few hours if you need to, any assistance in, uh, in, in knowing more details about the designs. So you get the HFSS file, archived file, and uh, the presentation work along with that, the PowerPoint that uh, that includes several pages of details for just the price of, that is shown on the uh, screen right now. So please contact me for this if you desire to do so. The other uh, advertisement I have, I'm gonna hold a three-day RF and microwave device design in 3D HFSS modeling. This will be, um, targeting the users, ANSYS users, and RF and microwave engineers in the Middle East areas, um, basically um, uh, here in Jordan some, uh, mainly the people, the uh, engineers in the United Arab Emirates, uh, Saudi, um, and, and Turkey, and any other um, states that are nearby here. Um, I'm going to hold it in the at the um, uh, at a local a small hotel in a rural area. Uh, the name of the hotel is Olo Branch Hotel, and that is in Jarash, Jordan. Uh, the cost of the the three day um, attendance covering the rooms and meals is a thousand dollars. Okay, so if you need to enroll, please send me um, your details, your name, your contact numbers, and I will get back with you on how you can register for this, okay? And the three days, basically, there's two sessions. Uh, there's uh, this part is, is gonna be two parts. The first one is is, is we start out with people that, uh, that are um, just starting uh, 3D modeling using HFSS. Um, and then we would move on to the level where we will build all the devices that I showed in my channel here in the sessions. We would introduce the theory, the microwave, the RF circuit theory, and we would actually design them from the scratch so, so that you get the experience, the hands-on. Um, everyone will come in with their HFSS uh, installed on their laptop, and it'll be hands-on mainly, um, small lectures, and then hands-on most of the time, one-on-one -on -one assistance. All right, so let's go. Radial uh, power combiners, where we use them? Like I showed you, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, they're mainly used a lot of times in uh, high power amplifiers, used primarily for radars and, and other applications such as 5G and uh, cellular uh, PAs. And as you can see here, the diagram uh, that shows 
what are how are these different from uh, the classical uh, series inline um, power combiners and splitters? Well, as you know, Wilkinson dividers in this case, let's say that you have two, four, six, eight amplifiers. Okay, that you need to build up the power level to deliver to the uh, to the antenna in a transmitter. Um, in this case, you would come in with a signal, you split twice, and then again you split twice on every uh, the bank, and then you split again twice. So you end up with eight to eight by one power splitter on this side. Now, after amplification, of course, you would again have to combine again and do exactly the same, except it's mirror imaged. Now, in a combiner like this, you can see how, how the losses can accumulate and also you can see how a lot of times you end up with a lot of mismatches between all these channels, okay? in the input delay and the uh, phase and the amplitude. And that of course, in, in, um, in a lot of applications is undesired. Now, contrary to this, uh, radial power combiners, they actually, um, they do the combining and the splitting immediately in one step. So you get some kind of way of the wave couples into um, the combiner, okay? And it combines all, all together. Well, this is a splitting in this case. This is the combiner. Uh, the, um, you split somehow the signal to every one of these amplifiers and the amplifiers couples in the power. And then the combiners actually combines into the combiner with a specific, a specialized um, structure. In this case, it could be a cavity or it could be a conical a coaxial line as we will cover those in the next session, hopefully, is the special uh, type of radial combiners are based on conical um, um, oversized uh, coaxial uh, cavity, air cavity. Okay, so, um, I, unfortunately, I didn't put the reference where I got this, but this is of the uh, publicly available uh, materials on this topic, on, on combiners and splitters in general. And it does a nice survey of, of the in-port combiners or splitters. When we say combiners, it's the same as splitters because you the only way is you flip it this way. This is a combiner. This is a split. This is a splitter. This is this is a splitter. This is a combiner. Okay, so we if we combine, we have either um, combiners in one step or in multiple steps, and that is you can see that right here. Okay, the, when we combine, when we combine here, we're combining multiple steps because we combine these two. And these two, and these two, and these two, and then we go combine these two, and then we combine these two, and then we combine the overall. Where the radial one, you combine immediately, all at one time, okay? So that's how we classify them, either one step or uh, multiple steps. In one step, which is where the radial combiners fit in, okay, the, or let's go the multiple steps. The multiple steps, are the classical corporate structures or chain structures that you're hopefully you're familiar with those. And those, of course, we, we're avoiding them because they are planar or they are large uh, in a sense that, so for instance, if you were using a, a waveguide combiners, eight-way combiner, as you, as you know, you have to combine two-way, two-way, and then two-way, two-way, and then two-way, and then two-way, and then two-way. So it's it's pretty large and, and heavy. And if you're doing it with Wilkinson's or, or hybrids, uh, it's the same way. It's lossy because uh, of the strip line losses of the BC board and it's large in size. So, and of course you get the mismatches between all these channels. Where if you're doing them one way, now we have three classes. We have a class which is cavity, uh, based on cavity, the use of, of a cavity. And then another one which is based on non-cavity. And then a third class, which is a spatial combiner, okay? In a cavity form, that's basically where we, last time we covered the SIW um, uh, cylindrical 
cavity combiner and splitter. We covered that in the previous video of this playlist. Hopefully you can, if you haven't watched that, please watch it because uh, it, it does help to start up to come to this point. Now, the other one is a resonant cavity. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. That's where you take a structure of a, of a cylindrical cavity, and then you create from it, you, you excite it somewhere at an optimal location, and then you tap away from it the in splits, or, or you bring in the in signals into the cavity, and then come out with a common line in the case of a combiner. And that's what I'm going to cover today, basically. So next time, we will be covering these here. Okay, the non-cavity type, we have conical transmission line, like I said to you, and that's uh, basically um, an oversized coaxial line cavity, which we will show that hopefully next time. And that even that is split into several types because you could base it on, uh, on coaxial cavity uh, with uh, SMAs, uh, probes, co coaxial line probes or strip lines, uh, st um, uh, probes or suspended line probes. And we will cover three of those types, okay? So what is a radial cavity-based combiner splitter is? It's a cavity-based radial power combiner that guides the electromagnetic wave signal through inside a resonance structure that has air cavity, okay? So experiencing the lowest loss of splitting or combining because the medium is air, okay? Now, there are two common types of radial uh, cavity combiners and splitters. One we covered already, which is the surface integrated, substrate integrated uh, waveguide, okay? I keep saying surface, I'm sorry, substrate integrated waveguide. And the, the other one is, is basically based on a cylindrical cavity, and that's what we're going to cover today. So here it is, okay? So you've got, we've got a cavity here, okay? Cylindrical cavity. And what we do, we come in and excite it somewhere. In this case, it's the center top or the center bottom. And then we tap away from it with an N number of outputs. So it's an N plus one, uh, they call it N plus one port, uh, the passive device. And in here, I grabbed an available picture of a product that is based on this topology. So what we've got here, and that's one of the designs I will present today using HFSS. So basically we have a waveguide in here, that, and then we have a transition from waveguide to coaxial line, and the coaxial line comes down, and then again, another transition from coaxial line to a waveguide. And in this case, really the transition is from a coaxial waveguide to a cylindrical cavity. And of course, a cylindrical cavity, for those of you who remember from your electromagnetic class, electromagnetic two class, you did cover cylindrical cavity, and you, uh, the, uh, you are, hopefully you're very aware of the uh, formulas that, that, uh, that describes the, uh, how to find the resonance, how to find the Q, and so forth. And those are available, and I have an example to go through right now. So in this case, we have this, and then we go again. Uh, we distribute equally, radially, on this uh, cavity, the outputs. So this could be used as a splitter. We bring in here signal, and then we go down, and we split in way around, okay? Or a combiner where we take all these signals and combine them to uh, this coax, and again, go into a waveguide, okay? So... Let's uh, let's cover generally the characteristics of the uh, uh, of the uh, radial cavity based combiners. And again, uh, just so that uh, what we are trying to cover basically is the characteristics of these devices. Like for instance, this one here, where we use um, this one, we use there's eight waveguide outputs that are common to onto a cylindrical uh, cavity in here. And this cavity is excited by a single um, uh, uh, coaxial line, similar to the case where you would couple in the 
it's really a, a coaxial line to a, um, a waveguide transition, okay? Now, the middle one, of course, the, the middle one feeds the signal or take away the signal, where the other ones here, these ones really, we, as, as, as you remember, we've covered the waveguide to planar or to coaxial line transitions. And that's this transition here, of course, is exactly designed the same way where we design it. We have a short end and a quarter wavelength from the center of this at the center frequency. So this is pretty simple design. So all we have to do is I will show you in a minute the uh, this 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 connector here, the uh, coaxial connector or the uh, either SMA or N type. The dimensions of all we do is just draw it because these are standard, and then you design the cavity in here. Okay, and then of course the waveguide, you know what the waveguide is for your specific frequency. So you have the A and B for the waveguides. And then you attach waveguide ports to it. And then you put a short uh, right at a, a point, which is the uh, the quarter wave, not a short, but short distance from the out. Okay. All right, no, I'm sorry. This is a short. I was talking, um, I'm thinking the other one, which is... This one here, of course, we don't have a short with it is an out in this case in here. All right, so let's get back to the lecture. So now oh okay. Uh so now radio combiners, unlike waveguide binary power combining methods which are based on Wilkinson uh, couplers, uh, require large amount of couplers, in this case, if you do it that way, which can significantly increase volume, weight, and signal loss. That is, if you do it using classical um, uh, power combining, using waveguide that are based on Wilkinson co uh, couplers. Same thing for the uh, planar uh, combiners. Okay, traditional planar power combiner technology based on microstrip and strip line has the advantage of low cost. Yeah, it is a low cost because there is no mechanical manufacturing. There's no metal work. It's just a BC board. However, um, I mean, it is a small size. We know that, uh, and it's easy to integrate, but it really suffers from high loss and, which is important, I forgot to mention, is the inability to uh, uh, cope with high power handling, okay? So since this is used, primarily used in power amplifiers, um, these devices have to handle a lot of power, um, anywhere from one watt to kilowatt. So, uh, okay. So radial waveguide structures can be used to obtain multi-way power divider combiner with the advantage of broadband, they are broadband, Low loss, of course, compact size. Compact size is because this is relatively speaking, because compact size, since they're radially integratable, means let's say that if you have a PA, you can make the PA into a cylinder, okay? Where you would, the signal comes in, you'd have a radial splitter in here, a radial combiner in here, and a series, a 3D, a 360 degree, uh, 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 installed PA boards. So the whole thing really is compact since it's not laid in, in X, Y uh, dimensions, but rather in a radial circular or cylindrical uh, formation. And it, it suits applications like drones, uh, rockets, and airplanes, and so forth. Radar combiners has a set of peripheral ports. Ah, okay, that's one thing I forgot to mention. We call, let's just get ahead to these. These here, we name them as peripheral ports, okay? And this one is a central port. So let's come back. Okay. So peripheral ports where signals are inserted into a combiner and a centered port where the combined signal can be tapped out. And vice versa if you're using it as a splitter, okay? So now the radial power combiner is the most efficient power combiner for summing a large number of power amplifiers. And that is true. 
Uh, however, it might be a complex uh, design. Uh, now, analog devices bought a small company that, uh, that, that used to make, is it called Spatium? I think it's Spatium, which basically works, this, it builds power amplifiers that are exactly the same, done the same way. Uh, the structure of radial combiners allow placing a large number of ports very close to the main feed port, hence the overall loss and the combining path are minimized, which is true, because you're not really laying out the system in XY coordinates, but rather in a cylindrical coordinate. Spatial combining does not suffer from additive accumulation of essential loss and face mismatches of individual devices as in the uh, tree structure of ca cascaded two input combiners, like the rocket science. Now there are, okay, spatial combining and splitting, <clears throat> this is uh, used a lot, okay, to, for minimum loss, minimal loss, uh, signal combining and splitting. And it is related to the uh, radial combiners and splitters because the, the, it's a subset of that. And let's just define it. Uh, and this is where you, you uh, just to make it simple, uh, you're using you you're basically using free space to either combine or split. Okay, so meaning if you have a let's say you have a horn antenna and you're pointing at a set of power amplifiers, all have probes in air, and every one of them gets exactly the same amount of signal because of symmetry. Okay, and likewise on the output, same way. So and that's how the spatium works. Okay. Uh, the term spatial combining means combining a number of input power sources with the use of simultaneous addition of input signals in a kind of special structure with uh, multi-couplings or multi-excitations. And that's basically, I will have a whole uh, presentation on this, designing uh, one on these. In fact, we did see one design in one of my videos when we designed, uh, when I covered the uh, use of, of waveguide to microstrip line um, um, transitions, where we took a waveguide and we split with two probes, we split the signal and then fit it again and fit it through another transition onto one waveguide. So the, the, even though at the time I did not do any processing on the signal when it went to uh, a transmission line, but that's where you basically put your LNA or power amplifiers. Okay, so input signal sources are distributed in space and excite their own signal waves inside a specially designed space intended for power addition, and that's basically a radial combiner is one method. The structural radial combiner in this case, or a waveguide of a spatial power combiner may have a number of input ports and one output port, whereas the combining takes place inside the structure. So hold on to these thoughts here, and we say more when we go through the um, radial combiners for uh, spatial or spatial radial combiners. <clears throat> now, uh, let's look at the design of uh, the radial combiner. There, this is a picture of a cavity, okay, same as this cavity, except it's sideways. And in here, we're showing that we're feeding the center and then around it, the, the perimeter, okay, a quarter wavelength distance away from the walls, we distribute these um, probes to pick up the signal or to feed the signal. Now, in a case where you have eight wave, of course, every 45 degrees, you put one, okay? And so the, the, the cavity in here, if you look at the distribution of the E-field, it's exactly like this, where maximum in the uh, E-field at this point, and that's where we wanna feed. But at the uh, probe point, it's really maximum, but except the phase shift is opposite, okay? And that's basically the whole concept of radial combiner. So again, sideways, looking at the, uh, uh, at the at this one. So basically all we're doing with a radial combiner based on um, waveguide with a cavity, a cylindrical cavity, is we optimize the power transfer of, of and excite the correct mode, okay? The peripheral ports, 
which comes in on the sides, should be located at the radial distance rho where is easy has a maximum. In this case, this one's here. So this is where we wanna pick up the signal with the probes or the peripheral ports. They have to be in this case here and the feed has to be here, okay? And one thing about these is always the height of the cavities always a little bit less than uh, a half wavelength, okay? And so uh, the connector that we connect to this, that we excite the signal in the middle or on the sides, okay, it could be uh, either SMA or in time, depending on the power level and, and your preference frequency, uh, basically. So when we, well, the way we model here, and this is actually from a data sheet of a con an SMA connector, that is a, this is a semiconductor in this case, of course, has uh, four mounted screws, and then you have the the uh, Teflon in here, okay? And then you have the center connector in here extending this way. Now, what we usually do is we have to, we have to determine what is the length of this inner connector that has to go into the uh, cylindrical cavity? Okay, in this case, this one here. So practically, when you have a connector like this, you strip basically as much as you want and you cut the inner connector accordingly to the length that you want. And since you're inserting this in a metal, this becomes the, the coaxial line itself, the coaxial feed, all you have to do is really model it as a center connector, out of connector, and then the shield inside. We don't have to worry about all this mechanical um, details because we're interested only in electrical performance, not in to produce a solid, a true solid model. So again, this connector in here is based on these. So you basically take one of these and, you know. So let's go through the examples. First example, is this combiner here, okay? And this combiner in here, it has, let's go to the, uh, uh, okay, it's not this, it's not this. I'm gonna come back to this, okay, here it is. The first one basically uh, takes the signal from either eight ports, we've got ports, and then it combines it into the cylindrical cavity, okay, that is here. And then the signal is picked up from the cavity using this coaxial line, coaxial connector type that is right at the center. And in this case, all it is just a piece of the inner con conductor and the Teflon or the insulation around it, okay? Um, so when you look at this sideways, basically, um, uh, let me uh, go to this guy and make him transparent so we can see. So let's see this again. So basically, this is what you have, really. So you have the 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 signal comes into this waveguide and then it's picked up with this. There's, and this here is designed as a uh, a, a coaxial. Uh, line to waveguide transition with this distance being quarter wavelength, it goes in and again, and again, since the metals, in this case, I designed it so that the metal, the aluminum in this case and here and here is continuous. So really there is no need for a shield on the coaxial line. The aluminum itself, the aluminum hole itself acts as a shield, okay? So, uh, so and, and then again, you feed the signal to the center of this cavity, so so this design here. Oh, okay. So again, what we do in here, since we've got eight uh, way combining and splitting. Uh, so we have the, w the way we draw this is we draw one waveguide from here to here, and then we copy this every 45 degrees, and that's the beta angle in here. So that's 45 degrees. And then, of course, we draw the, and I'll show that in a minute. Of course, in my 
training class, we will do this from the scratch, okay? Right now, we don't have time to build this from zero. So, and the intention of this presentation is not to show you how you draw in HFSS, but rather how to get to the uh, performance and the theory of, of the device. Okay, so after that, we draw the uh, red, the uh, the cylinder, and then we unify the uh, the solid uh, solids of all of these, and then we draw a, an octagonal shape in here, and then I subtract both all of them, and that will become a hollow suction in here. Okay, and then you construct the other piece, which is the waveguide on top. So this is again showing the. Uh, how the rectangular to wave guide, rectangular wave guide to a coaxial uh, TEM transition in this case. And in this case, it shows that as well. So, okay. Uh, what else we have? So really the only, the only uh, design dimensions you would have on here is at first, you know the A and B for the waveguides. So you know the dimensions of these, the width and the height of this waveguide. The same thing for the waveguide that feeds the uh, the center. The coaxial line is the connector, which is from the manufacturer. Uh, and this distance in here from the sh back shore is quarter wavelength, okay? Um, so there's really the design is straightforward, okay? So let's go and see this simulated. So the first thing I do is let's observe the frequency, the 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 uh, the, uh, excite the the uh, the way. Okay, so we excite this is we excite the signal in here through this waveguide, okay, and then the signal goes into the other ports, and that's where we pick them up here or the other way around, okay, and then the intermediate transition between two the waveguides uh, that we can see how the um, E field is distributed. Let's get a cross section view. So you can see how the E field comes in here and goes in through the coaxial transition onto the ones on top. And if we uh, animate this just to show you, in this case, it's probably, this is a combiner or splitter. I forgot what I excited. Okay, so this is a splitter in this case. So the signal comes in from this into this waveguide, okay, into this waveguide, gets picked up by the the the, uh, the coaxial transition in here, okay, and then goes down to the cylindrical cavity, which is this cavity in here, and then gets distributed equally to all of the sides. Of course, notice how this is so symmetrical that in this case you wouldn't have any of the issues that you would have in a planar uh, splitter and combiner where the mismatches, uh, face mismatches, amplitude mismatches, temperature drift and so on. You, we don't have any of these issues in here. The uh, This was designed for the, um, let's see. This was designed to operate for this band in here. So we are operating from anywhere from uh, say, uh, around 29.29 29 gigahertz, okay? 29 gigahertz onto 35 gigahertz, okay? And we could see the uh, return loss is shown in here typically for the center and the, uh, the peripheral ports, okay? So that is the first uh, design in here. Now, of course, like I said, this is, this is really, you could see these uh, devices a lot of times the radars where this one here is attached to a parabola that would rotate all the time and that one is fixed down beneath somehow so okay so let's go to the other design second example that we have we have one which is a way radial power combiner and splitter which which uses a um, a coaxial on on not just this but the other ones as well and uh, I just realized I had these uh, there is no need for them because it's short but anyway um, so that's what we have so let's open that file 
this. Okay, so it's this guy here. Now again, what we have in here, this basically, we have a metallic short on these. And the reason I didn't short it with the metal is exactly is because I recycled this here for the other uh, the example that we just did. I built on that. But this is a piece of metal that led to the waveguide. And the um, the SME in here, the SME or the N-type connector probe is inserted right at a quarter wavelength away from this short end. So in this case, we would feed a signal in here and it would get split eight um, uh, way equally. And let's just see how the uh, pattern of the E field on this, and that's how we got it. Okay, so we basically let's animate it. Okay, so you can see that the signal is going in, uh, red hot is the source, so we're going in, feeding into the cavity, and the cavity is propagating through the cavity and going, get picked up again by another SMA connector. And in this case, I plotted the surface currents because of a little difficulty on getting access to the air inside to display the field, but it's a say it's, it's exactly the same um, idea. Okay. So let's view this from the side. Well, you won't see the uh, the waveguide corners, but you can see the the where the signal how it couples in to these guys. This signal comes in in here and there. Oh, that's okay. There we go. I was wondering, okay, so this one is what comes in, gets distributed to all of them, and then it comes out of all these ports. Okay. This is the cavity, how the signal is distributed into the cavity and get formed eight way into this. The frequency response of this guy is the same one as the other one. It's got a little ribbon on it. But it's for the same band, the same waveguide. All we're doing here is we added, it's just how we access the peripheral ports. Instead of waveguide, we access them through uh, an, uh, a coaxial connector. Let's go to the third example. Okay, and that one is basically a coaxial waveguide. It we combine our coaxial. Okay, on this case, we feed the point in here and we keep this as as a waveguide. So let's, um, uh, I'm gonna come back to this, but this is how you would draw this device in here. Um, so let's go to that example. Okay, so it's this guy here. So what we have, it's just exactly the same, except now the same as the other one, except we are not accessing this through a coaxial transition, waveguide to a coaxial transition, but we're rather taking the signal out of the waveguide straight. And uh, let's see the E field on this guys, uh, should be the same. The only thing is just basically uh, propagating through a waveguide to the peripheral ports. So, so here is the animation of this. We come in here. Signal comes in here, goes in, and gets distributed equally to the ports, equally, okay? And um, okay, a frequency response on this. Uh, let's see results. Same exact same. Like the other one, except we don't. We have little lower loss. Uh, of course, look at this loss. I mean, we've got eight ways, so that's nine dB in theory. So this is only three tenths of a dB loss. A little bit better than the one that uses a uh, coaxial um, uh, line to wave guide transition. The um, so 
how do we uh, design this? Uh, basically, if you come in, let me see if I could show you right now quickly, just to show you one of these. So let's just get rid of the uh, E field first. Okay, so if we come in here, okay, and uh, let's see if you, uh, okay. Okay, so if you look at this basically, before I joined all this metal work together, it's really made of eight um, four wave guides, okay, standing from one side to the other, a cylindrical a cylinder in the middle, and then the octagon that overlaps all of them. And all you have to do is subtract and add and unify the copper. So, and if you learn, want to learn how to do this, of course, uh, it's pretty simple anyway. But in my uh, training course, if you attend it, um, you will in person um, create all of these with my assistance um, right there. This is uh, basically a, uh, just, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not using PowerPoint. So this thing keeps going back all the way to the first page. Somebody knows how to fix this issue with this freebie PowerPoint. Let me know in the comments. But this is a, an actual picture of one of these devices. This is, you can buy this, okay? So, and as you can see in here, by the metal work that is done, this is a pretty high power uh, device. So here is the cylindrical cavity. Here is the peripheral outputs, okay? So in this case, um, okay? And then there's the waveguide that feeds the uh the 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 medium transition which is the coaxial line in here or this might be um no this is a coaxial okay this is a coaxial transition this looks like it's down in the L band or something it's pretty large um same way we have these two devices from the variable literature here's one in here you can see okay okay so no, how, how do we design this? Um, well, the first step is you design, of course, you know what the frequency of operation, so you have already the waveguide dimensions. So create your waveguide, and then model an EM, make sure that it works fine, okay? And then you need to design the cavity, okay? The cavity is pretty simple. You've got a formula for the uh, to find out the radius or the diameter and the length of the cavity. And those are in Matthew books. Uh, Matthew book, they, they are documented in every electromagnetic book. Just type um, uh, microwave cavity, waveguide cavity uh, design. And I'll show you in a minute an example. And then, of course, if you're using coaxial transitions like these three examples that I just showed you, you need to design the TEM to T10 coaxial to waveguide transition and verify that in the um, simulator or the modeling. And then verify the center feed once you assemble the, at least the center feed, the, uh, okay, for the M. And then of course, assemble the whole thing together with the peripheral connectors and optimize in the, um, in, in the uh, EM model. As an example, let's see this uh, as an example, just to show, to, to refresh your memory. We have a cylindrical cavity like this. So the way we determine the resonance frequency is by the, the length of the cavity and the radius or the diameter of the cavity. And we know that the diameter is always has to uh, half wavelength, okay? So we know that the, the beta D is equal to the L by, and with L is zero, one, two, three, and so on, okay? So it's multiples of a half wavelength, okay? The resonance frequency for the TE and the TM NM modes is given by these two formulas. And this is, you can you can go back to your EM books and you will see these formulas, how they're derived. So what we have, we have the L, which corresponds to these numbers. And then we have the N and M, which corresponds to the TE modes or the TM mode numbering, okay? 
one zero or one 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 so forth. Okay, these here these numbers are correspond. These are tabulated. We get them. The, the it's it's out of the scope to show how we get these numbers, but these numbers we get them from tables that are based on Bessel functions, and 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 um, doing the Maxwell equations of of wave propagation through the cylinder cavity. Okay, so let's say as an example that we want to, and I took this out of a book. Okay, let's say that we need a. Uh, um, we need it to resonate at five gigahertz, and we need to, uh, this cavity filter, this cavity in here is filled with um, Teflon in this case, okay? With a tangent loss of triple O four. Now they want us to find what is the um, diameter and the length. And of course, there is a, a rule of thumb that we always want to make the D in here is twice the A, or the diameter is equal to the length, and Therefore, really, it's a square, okay? That's essentially what you would want. So if you use this formula in here, you end up with, okay, with a PO1 prime from the table lookup, and you can look these, these ta this table, these numbers are available for all the mode configurations uh, orders. But 3.832, if you substitute it in here, and knowing that these the dam the length is equal twice the radius, okay, you end up with the a length, the length of the cavity is two point seven four centimeters, and so we have d is equal to twice that, which is that much five point four eight centimeters. And again, if it's copper, now you could we have the formulas for both the copper the q of the copper and it's based on this, which is 29,000. And of course, since it's filled with dielectric material, the, the, the Q, the, the, the dielectric Q is based on the tangent loss, which is only 2,500. And now the overall Q, of course, is only 2,300 since you have to parallel this with this, okay? And so the last topic, the last slide is basically a slide where a lot of cases, a lot of times, you look at this um, this this uh, radial combiner splitter, and it is really you can represent it as a a parallel RLC. This is uh, the cylinder, okay. And then the the uh, the coaxial to microwave transition. That's basically this here transition. And then we have a set of n parallel n parallel loading the cavity. The cavity is loaded with all. N ones, so always the impedance of these looking in here is really n times the impedance of this center feed. So you, this is good to represent, and uh, you always, of course, have the the peripheral impedance is really the waveguide impedance divided by n, and that's a, a rule also that we have. Okay, so uh, this really. Uh, puts an end to this. Uh, one last thing that I want to show you is um, uh, when you go to, uh, when we have a cavity, uh, when we draw the cavity like this, for instance, okay? This is a cavity with the uh, with with a, an outside that is metal and inside that is vacuum. That's the inside, okay? And the thickness of the metal, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't play a, a role as long as, say, it's uh, you know reasonably thick enough. Um, the, you could run eigenvalue um, solution on this when you design it. And in this case, I just happen to have this being. Uh, let's see, the A is twelve point five millimeters, and the uh, the, uh, the the length is 25, okay, which is twice that. And basically you put in a solution for this, which is eigen mode solution. And you start out from say a minimum one gig, and then you can solve this actually. And you can come in and verify that you you can find out what the Q is and what the resonance frequency is, is at, okay? And you can display even the E field 
into the uh, cavity. So in this case, like in this case, for instance. So this this is would be the 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 um, the step number two in the design of process of these um, um, devices. So now again, I appreciate you uh, viewing the video. Uh, let me know uh, if you uh, have any questions on this. Um, please um, check out my list of other videos. And we are gonna go next to another set of radial combiners, uh, mainly the uh, oversized coaxial cavity combiner and the spatial combiners as well. So again, this is Mohammed Nazami wishing you the best. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much. Have a good day.